to Shanghai. I'm Chen Xuan. Hi, I'm Timothy Pope. Whether it's streamlining logistics, optimizing high-tech research and development, or assisting us with regular everyday life, artificial intelligence is everywhere now. China's growing presence in AI development seems to have piqued the interest of many industrial giants who are betting big on China in this new era. Zhang Zhishuan has more. The five red lights come on, 29 laps of action as we go and send it in Shanghai. The Shanghai International Circuit is going back to life, but quiet. Ah. So the cars go about one and a half seconds quicker. A robot for mega casting parts in automobile manufacturing. As we go into Gen 4, we see an um, evolution of battery technology led by an awful lot of um, Chinese investment and, Ch and Chinese knowledge. And as, as the, the Chinese market has, has gone into the world, I think that's really amplified it. Whenever Formula E comes to Shanghai, there is a lot more to consider than the face itself. China is now the driving force behind explosive growth in the EV sector from sales to R&D and manufacturing. But there's also AI. We cannot forget about the advances in AI in terms of vehicle intelligence and manufacturing. And that's where I met Sammy Atia, president of ABB Robotics and discrete automation business area. Yeah. What solutions are you offering to? I mean, this is a good example for a casting uh, solution. You know, the parts in the mm -hmm. future would become even bigger because the, the EV vehicles, the, the, the size of this and the, uh, the construction will become larger. Robots that are actually built here in China, in our factory here, mega factory in, uh, in Developed Shanghai. Developed here in China? Here, what about R&D? We have also an R&D uh, team that makes uh, basically adjustments specifically for the Chinese uh, needs. And that is really important for us. And we have more than 2,000 employees here uh, who work in sales, but also service, but also R&D and adjust, adjustments for the for the market here. So it's really cool. And we have a leading edge technology for paint, where we use 25% less paint because it's like a, a pixel paint, like your a printer at home. It really goes exactly where you to need to reduce waste. To reduce waste reduce energy and you can paint whatever you want on the car you can paint the picture and so on and the customers love it but we also integrate AI into our robots to help you know make them smarter and leaner and more efficient so that is also part of our, our strategy where do you position China market currently in this AI transformation oh it's really at the forefront I, I must say uh, we had spent the whole week now uh, doing what we call an AI accelerator in our mega factory and we had more than 350 uh, ideas generated in AI just here in China, working with the global teams, and we selected Shanghai uh, uh, for that because also the great ecosystem, the great universities and startups and so on. So really, uh, I would say really in the forefront of AI. As one of the world's largest industrial automation companies, ABB is preparing to spin off its robotics division into a separate publicly listed entity and it's betting big on China now with its rising emphasis on AI. Last week, the company brought its flagship AI innovation event to China for the first time. To dig into more details, I went to its robotics mega factory in Shanghai. We created more than 350 new proposals of AI, um, and we educated more than 1,000 uh, people to accelerate the development. It goes really across all the, the, the products in, in ABB. For example, in the motors uh, business, to be able to predict failures in the mo uh, motor using AI technology, or even in a room like this, uh, with our colleagues in electrification to be able to monitor temperature and to adjust the temperature and to reduce the cost of energy um, significantly by using AI technologies. And ro in robotics, we use it across the board. You know, the latest development is uh, being able to talk to our robot. The robot understands what we're saying and makes basically executes the task uh, of it. So we will see more and more of these uh, developments coming. How is the AI currently different from, uh, let's say, a decade ago when you started uh, yes. really to involve AI into your products? Well, traditionally, we used AI in our product that was what we call classical AI, that's pattern recognition. So seeing uh, patterns uh, using AI technology. Now with this new uh, transformer models, which have created ChatGPT and in China DeepSeek, now you're able to decompose language. So language is becoming a, a much uh, stronger element of AI. 
that you can talk to a system. We have introduced a system that you can basically do diagnostics of a whole machine. You talk to the machine and ask what is wrong, and the machine answers to you. So this development is really accelerating uh, things. And now you will see more and more um, integration of modalities, speech, vision, video, and all of that will enable even more enhanced uh, productivity in, in, uh, in the robots business. This year, uh, China's AI development has been under the global spotlight, especially since the start of the year. Uh, an app, DeepSeek, has taken the world by storm. How would you evaluate China's AI capability currently, and are you looking for cooperation with those local AI developers? Absolutely. We, uh, we look forward to collaborate here in China. I think there's a lot of investments that are helping the overall development of AI. And we see that here in Shanghai, but uh, in China across the board. And we tap into that, into universities and the work with the, with the startups. So we are very happy that we are uh, you know, embedded in, in China and the, and the ecosystem here. We believe that we cannot do everything on our own. This year is not an easy one for multinationals, especially pressure yeah. from the U.S. Do you feel it currently challenging? No, not at all. Not at all. We feel very, very welcome in China. We feel that uh, we are progressing. We we, uh, we develop our products here in China. We 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 feel local, and we are very happy to to be here. Yeah, we have you know more than two thousand employees in robotics here, so they serve the market. And yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Intangible cultural heritage refers to the cultural expressions created and passed down by various ethnic groups throughout history. More than 150 representatives from around the world gathered in Shanghai recently to discuss how to preserve these cultural treasures. The representatives were from professional fields as well as from the cultural and tourism sector. High on the list of topics was the restoration of ancient pottery and porcelain. Experts say each ceramic piece has unique damage. There's no single fixed restoration method that works for each one. Overseas representatives all shared their views on new efforts to protect their cultural heritage, but also expressed concerns about passing it on to the next generation. Jakarta governments play uh, serious attention to uh, protect and preventing our cultural heritage. You know that our museums, we have uh, uh, a lot of collections, such as ceramics and paintings and also batik. You know, batik, like I wear this batik cloth and also puppet, Indonesian traditional puppet. Young generations, uh, not too interesting to the traditional uh, uh, art ma making, ceramic art, art making. So this is the challenge of us, how to improve their interest. The state of Uzbekistan, our president, supports uh, their handcrafts um, and uh, traditional culture, traditional art. And uh, uh, I think it's very important for society and for youth especially. Today we speak about culture, we speak about cultural heritage and the untangible cultural heritage because now we are living at the globalization period and uh, I think that every people, uh, every country has uh, his traditions, national traditions and uh, the problem of preserving of identity is very, very important. Nam 
The 2025 International Intangible Cultural Heritage Protection Forum has been held 13 times now, dating back to the first in 2013. Coinciding with the forum it was the 15th International Invitational Exhibition of Traditional Arts. Welcome to Shanghai A2Z. If you like a bike ride, Shanghai is home to a number of great cycling options. But well, first of all, Yuandang cycling route in suburban Qingbu district is a good choice. This 23-kilometer route meanders along the shoreline of Yuandang Lake. There are great lake views and plenty of rest stations along the way to stop and take in the scenery. And there's also the Chongming Island cycling route. This follows a 120-kilometer riverside path, which is very popular with joggers and cyclists. This one is great to do over a couple of days with stops to check out Dongtan Wetland and Dongping National Forest Park. And if you want to stay closer to the city center, Xuhui Riverside Cycling Route is a popular choice. Beyond the river views, this route passes quite a few museums and art galleries down at the West Fund, which is one of the greatest and the biggest art zones in Asia. It's also a really nice public area down there and a great spot for a bike ride and a picnic. If you have any questions for us, you can find us on the socials. We always love hearing from you and you can find all our content online as well. And join us here Monday to Friday on Dragon TV. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.